stove, I mean, yeah. say, Amen. let's walk the Lord in the service. Heavenly Father, Lord, we simply oh, thank you, God, for all this. Thank you for all the blessings you give us, Lord. Lord. All the things you do for us, Lord. And what you're going to do, Lord. Thank you, God, for all this. Thank you, Lord. I pray for the saints and the saints of the Lord. I pray for those who are hurting, God. Bless the service. Bless the Lord, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we love you. We pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, me and I name in the church. Say
just about Oh, the body of a test of mind Oh, God, I'll live Oh, God, I'll die Somebody ought to test me mind Well, well, when somebody ought to test me mind
stranger here just passing through on a temporary stay. But I'm looking forward to the time when all heaven it will be mine. I'll watch and pray for
सुरी देते It's enduring times. 
Jesus. Yes. It's time that you've got to go on, regardless of what people think about you, regardless of what people say about you. Yeah. Amen. You've got to hold your head up high and say, I'm going on with the Lord just the same. Yeah. Hallelujah. We appreciate the Lord so much tonight. Yeah, praise God. See, the devil always wants you to walk around with defeat. Come on. We have victory. Victory. We have victory. No matter how bad the devil fights you, you've got to rise up against that enemy. Yeah. Shake yourself off and say, I'm not going to let this hinder me. It's going to challenge me to do more for God. I'm going to be stronger in God. I'm going to put on the hold. I'm going to have this whole armor of God. And the devil better not mess with me again. Somebody give God a prayer. Get me in. You're not going to step over, step no boundary. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. I've got something ain't in the world that did it, and the world can't take it away. i got joy and speak full of glory. I've got the Holy Ghost and power. I've got what it takes to get me from here to there. Somebody give God a shout of praise. You got to say, I'm coming into the house of God. I've got to get to where my refuge is. And my help is in the Lord. And I can't allow these things to get the best of me. I'm just going to lift my hands up and praise God. Regardless of what the devil's done to me. I'm an overcomer by the, by the words of my testimony. And by the blood of the Lamb. Somebody give that one day. Because it's easy when the enemy comes against you. He's shouting his ink pans out. <laughs> it's easy when the enemy comes against you to get frustrated. Yeah. He knows that. Yeah. Amen. He'll tell you you can't do nothing. Amen. He'll tell you, amen, you've had a bad day and you don't feel like it. Yeah. Come on. We don't go by our feelings. Yeah. Hallelujah. We yeah. plug into the one, thank God. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm plugged in. Yeah. I'm plugged in. Hallelujah. It don't take something to work me up. It don't take something to get me on fire. Because there's something on the inside of me and you that's got what it takes to get us to where we're going. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. I didn't come in here. And I just look at the four wall. I didn't come in here. They didn't let the devil even talk to my mouth. I come in here to give God the glory and praise. Because if the devil starts messing, God's getting ready to start blessing. Look at your name and say there's a blessing coming your way. Or the devil would be fighting you hard. Right. You know, if the church world would get on fire for God, we wouldn't have people in and lost. We wouldn't have people going out lost. We'd have people going out saved. If people get on fire for God, we'd have sick people going out healed. We'd have people going out discouraged, going out encouraged. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, that's what church is all about. It's not coming in to see and talk to your best friend. It's not coming in to see what somebody's got on. It's coming in to give God the glory and the praise and to get into His presence where the blessings of God come in. of the spirit will break that curse of the enemy that he's tried to put on you somebody get out of here I wore some black shoes tonight I'm going to sound even more better hallelujah I usually wear shoes with heel on them now but I wore some black shoes hallelujah look at your neighbor and say I, I love to shout and praise God A let it out. I can't keep it locked up inside. Because if you keep it locked up inside, you'll explode after a while. That's why, amen, thank God. It's better felt than it is told. Somebody give God a break.
start manifesting himself to you. Honey, let me tell you, you won't pout, you won't doubt, but it'll put a shout in your shoes. It'll put a shout all over you. You want to run. You want to give God the praise and the glory. Weird things. People are doing 
horrendous things. The devil's just raging. He's manifest. You know, the devil's behind everything that's bad. God's behind everything that's good. God is a good God. And the devil's a bad devil. trouble. I don't know about you, but the devil's caused me so much trouble. That's why I come in here and I just got to praise God. I got to lift my hands up and praise Him. I got to thank the Lord for what He's done for me. Amen. When I think of His goodness, yeah. what He's done for me, yeah. when I think of His goodness and how He set me free, I can shout, 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 shout all night. Well, now we just need to have a hold of your shout down. Hallelujah. And shout it in the morning time. Hallelujah. Shout every devil down, back down to hell where they come from. And say, devil, I challenge you to bother me again. Because if you try to bother me again, I'm going to shout right over your head that much more.
devil's trying to pack it on your car. Yeah. How many people know that that one was heavy? Yeah. But if two got on you, how many people know that's heavy? Lay down there, Joe. Lay down. Here we go. Lay down. Oh. Yeah, now the devil wants to knock you down, and then he wants to try to. Hey, man, I'm gonna pull my shoes off. <laughs> he wants to try to stomp on you, walk on you. When he gets you down, he wants to walk all over you. But Jojo, get up. Get up, Jojo. Jojo ain't gonna let it. He's going to get up and praise God and say, devil, you're a liar. I'm going to walk on. I'm going to run on. I'm not going to let the devil keep me down. I got too much to gain to lose. Somebody give God a praise. I got too much to gain to lose. Hallelujah. See, the devil would like to hinder us all. He's our adversary. He walks about roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. But the Bible said, who resists? He's trying to get come against homes. He's trying to come against marriages. He's trying to come against the children. But thank God, we are the church. We are the body of believers. And we're going to rise up in the majority and say, I'm standing with you. We're fighting this good fight together. We're in this thing together. We're not going to let the enemy defeat us. Because the enemy would like nothing better than for us to give up and quit. Yeah. Devil will attack you through your husband or wife. Devil 
you through your children. The devil will attack you in any, any way he can. He'll attack your body. He'll attack your mind. But thank God, we are the children of God. And we're going to say, devil, you can attack me one time too many. I'm going to walk all over you. You're not tired of this thing. Vengeance is my 
now and say, Lord, I will repay. He'll say, you don't have to fight this battle. The battle's not yours. But shout, it's God's. You know, amen. A lot of times we take the things in our own hands and we make a mess of it. Make a mess, yeah. We make a mess of it. Yeah, we do. Hallelujah. How many knows that we're coming out? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, I'm coming out. Yeah. If you ain't broke out of your shell yet, honey, we're going to break that shell for you. Yeah. Come on. If we're going to chip away at it. Hallelujah. How many knows an ice chip? Yeah, come yeah. on. You got one of those ice picks? Yeah. yeah. You can chisel away at it. Uh, little pieces at a time. Piece at a time. A piece at a time. And a piece at a time. After a while, it After a while, it's down to nothing. Uh, <laughs> it melts away. Come on. Come or when an egg hatch is brother going in. Everybody see the egg hatch? Yep. The little needlers? Yep. They'll keep picking at it. I remember the so I'm coming out of here.
people that can't hear will be able to hear clearly. And then people that can't talk will be able to talk. Yeah. Amen. Can you imagine a place like this? It made perfect. And it's, amen, and everything is centered around Jesus. Amen. God, the Father, and the Son. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. We'll worship Him throughout eternity. Shout, eternity is forever. Amen. If I die, uh, yes. the only play, the only chance you'll see me again is you get over there. Yeah, come on. Because, amen, that's where you'll have to visit me. I'm not going to hell, so you can't visit me there. Come on. I'm going to heaven. And if you're going to visit me, my address is going to be 777 Heaven's Gate. said if we know the Lord to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Glory. Come on. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, I can just, there's a song I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can't even imagine. My eyes, I can't, what your eyes will see. I can only imagine. We can only imagine. What that day will be like.
very beginning of surgery. And then they went in, and I believe she said they removed the thyroid for mm -hmm. two months. They removed that, and they called him from the lab, I guess, during surgery, and said, there was no cancer here. So then she was in for surgery, and there was no cancer there. No cancer. <laughs> how, do, how many knows that honey God can heal every trace of cancer? It is your faith that moves God. God is bigger than any doctor, any problem, any sickness, any disease. God made these bodies, and God can fix them. Amen. So God's going to fix it, I know. Yeah. Yes, God's going to fix it, I know. I forget the name of it. But he's going to fix it. Yeah. Brother Garnett, can I say something? Yeah. When I was in the National Guard, uh -huh. I was being basic training up here at Fort Knox, Kentucky. First time I've ever been in Kentucky. Uh-huh. I pulled a ligament in my shoulder. Uh-huh. The doctor says... When I get in my early 30s, I wasn't but about 17, the doctors told me, when I get to my early 30s, you're going to have trouble with your shoulder. Here I am, 52, and I'm still using my shoulder. I still feel no trouble in my shoulder. That goes to show who is smarter, the doctor or God. Do the wind with that shoulder. years ago, they give her no hope. Yeah. No hope. We just said, okay. We said, you know, get her, get everything ready. There's people that's crazy enough. I, I've got an eight and uncle. I don't, I don't call them crazy, but they're idiot. That, that's idiot, idiotic. <laughs> idiotic to buy your bird plot. They've got their tombstone already up with their name on it. Already. They're already planted. They're dead. They already got the funeral home paid for. Yeah. Well, they could not die but the grave. <laughs> they could go with the rapture. They just wasted their money. Wasted money. That's pretty crazy. I mean, if that's my aunt and uncle. I felt that bitter sense in that. I'm not going to buy a hand rock with my name on it and say, I'm looking to die. <laughs> and going to the funeral home and saying, I'm going to get this casket out. I want this casket. <laughs> and I want this stuff at my funeral. Well, you're planning on your funeral and you might not die by the way of the grave. I should live and not die. You might, amen, exit this world with a, with, leave with a shout. Yeah. Or just go out of your body and go with the Lord. Hey, and if I ain't going to die for the grave, I'm going to die for the way of the grave. There's going to be some people alive and remain. Jesus said, some of you won't. I mean, and it's got their name on it and got the picture on the front of it. I said, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> They're just preparing to die. They're just saying, uh, say, Lord, we're all going to die, but you might not die with the grave. Amen. That's right. Amen. They're just wasting the money. They should take them a trip or something on it. <laughs> or give it to the church or something. Instead of waiting on dying and going to the grave. Or get caught up on some meals that they're behind on. <laughs> Or go buy us some good food to eat for the rest of our life. <laughs> Give the Lord a praise. Amen. But that's not right. You know, people can do with your life what you want with your life. Yeah, you, mean, I don't, you know, I, I know we're going to die, you know, whether by the grave or the, the catching away of the church, but I'm looking for the catching. I'm not looking for a hole in the ground. I'm looking for one in the sky. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not looking for a hole in the ground. I'm looking for one in the sky. Thank the Lord. Let's pray for the needs of God's people now. Yes, sir. It's a lot of needs. Michelle passed. They was going to come. They was on the way tonight. Somebody got sick and they had to go to Sonderson Hospital. Gail and them, they're looking for him. 
Just like that song said a while ago, cast all your cares upon the Lord. Yeah. For he cares for you. Yeah. He'll see you through. Yeah. If you'll cast all your cares upon yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I believe that tonight. Hallelujah. You know, there's nothing impossible to those that believe. Amen. Shout nothing. 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 Absolutely, positively, nothing is impossible for those who believe. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we bring in your need to you. We know that you're in a you're in a prayer, you're in a prayer answer prayer, God. We know that God, you're a big God, you're a prayer answer, God, you're a God that cannot fail. We might never foul spirit of hell. We might never spirit of my God. Father God, we loose the spirit of the power of God in every situation, in every home, God, in every body. In every thought of the mind of God, we pray for a mighty manifestation of the Spirit and the power to interject in every situation, God. Oh, God, let praise reports come back in and say, God has moved for me. God has done this for me. God, have, well, Lord, you, you've done great things for us before, and you're going to do it again, God. We appreciate you, God, what you've done. And we're thanking you, Lord, in advance what you're getting ready to do, God. You're a wonderful God. Let's receive our tithes and offers tonight as you get them. Give them to the Lord. We'll truly bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we ask God to bless us all for one day. Father, we ask God that you let us use it, Lord, to benefit the kingdom of the Lord. And we may see many souls come in and be saved, Lord. We love you and we pray for you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus.
can't uplift the name of Jesus if you always got the devil. See, that's why the devil comes to your mind and he'll get in your heart to make you angry. Yeah, man. Yes, he does. They sure he'll does. He'll puff you up like a marshmallow. Anybody ever roast marshmallows? Yep. You put them on the fire and they're good. Mm, they're good when you put them in your mouth. They have a little blackness on your lips when you wipe it off. But what you speak is what you are. Yeah. Yep. And that's what we become. And you know, that's why the devil don't want you. How many people don't look at me and say, I ain't got glue on my pew? There's no glue on my pew. <laughs> say about it, think about it. No glue on my hands. No glue on my feet. How many people know the devil wants to glue you down? And you know where it comes from? With your mouth. Think about this. If you come into church and you're angry at somebody, you've been angry, you've been angry. We've all been angry. You've been angry way back. The Bible said we can be angry and sin not. But how many people know that Jesus got mad on He got upset. He had his flesh to body. He got upset. He went to the temple and he was trying to sell on the God's day. And he turned over tables. Over tables. Are you with me? So he had all feelings and he had all these things built up in him like me and you feel. And he had an opportunity to do with what he is going to do. But you know, even on the cross, Amen. with his arms folded out, and his feet nailed together, he looked down at them people that had spit on him, yeah. that pierced a sword in his side, yeah, that forsook him, brother Roy. Yeah, and they, they, and even his disciples that followed him, they said, "Hey, do you know this man?" No, I don't know him. Uh, That's just like when you go out. Are you? Don't be ashamed of who you are. This mouth, if you got something in there, honey, say, I'm a Pentecostal horse. Yeah. I shout and I get happy. Come on. Me and my brother talked this late. We talk, I talk to a lot of people. I got a big mouth. But I use it for the Lord. Come on. How many people know that some people take that you get happy and they think that's just an amen? Uh -huh. Say amen. Yeah. Some people say, well, we shout at our church, but they never get her dance in their shoes. Uh -huh. Say amen. Yeah. Blue to the pew. Blue to the pew. The pew. Yeah. We need to get the glue off the pew and put up a put up a what you got in your hand. Let me tell you, if you get happy in the Lord, honey, you won't just sit there. I'm not talking. Oh. And, hey, you know, sometimes sometimes it's good to get up and shout at it. Yeah. The devil wants to use you as a ploy. Yeah. He does. And you know what's more, Pastor God, than this than this standing. Yeah. Anybody can stand all day long and not be in their heart, and you might want well to sit down. Come on. Are you with me? It's in your mouth. You come in your mouth and you say, honey, or you tell your, or you tell your person that you go that ain't even going to church. You that may be lost. You say, honey, I'm going to church now. I'm going to give me a blessing. Yeah. Come on. Are you with me? Yeah. You can either say that or you're going to say, honey, you made me so bad tonight. I don't even feel like going to church. That's a life in your tongue. Come on. Or your boss get mad at you. Ever had a boss mad at you? Oh, yeah. Or you get mad at your boss. Yeah. It affects you when you come to God's house. Yeah. Are you with me? But I got news for you. When somebody comes against you, you need to say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know what that does? The Bible said that he can call the fire upon their head. Yeah. How many people know the fire hurts? Yeah. Amen. You want to burn somebody? Burn them in a good way. Yeah. Look at them and say, I'll be praying for you. Yeah. It's hard to do. Yeah. Turn another cheek is hard to do. Yeah. Say amen. amen. But when you get this power of the love of the Lord in your heart, it'll make good things. Where do you think you speak from? What what speaks? What makes you speak these things? Uh, that's of the heart. What makes you speak things? Yeah. It's what you go through. Yeah. What you are, what you do, is what you are and become. Yeah. How many people don't love the devil? Don't want, the devil don't want you to love nobody. Yeah. Come on. If somebody does me bad, you know what I do? I brush it off. I'm like a duck. Just goes right off my back. Water just flows down. Yeah. So I said, Brian, you talk about home. It shouldn't have 
somebody what you're going to do for the church. You're going to say, what can I do? Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference of me going to somebody going to say, you need to do this, you need to do that. When, when a true child of God speaks to their abundance of the fruit of their mouth, they say, what can I do for you, Lord? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we ain't got many churches like, what can I do for you, Lord? Come on. Say, amen. God took me in a total different direction down to preaching. I didn't know I was going to preach the pastor could do, but God had some of my heart. But God said, preach on this heart. How many people know that you ever say something, you try to take it back, and then you can't do it? Amen. And it's hard. A brother offended is harder to be one of the strong city. What does that mean? That means once you hurt somebody, that, that, that infiltrates them and makes them hurt and hurt somebody else. Say amen. amen. But you know what? It's, it's one thing. If somebody, if somebody truly don't love you, they never are going to love you in the way that you should be loved. No way. And you'll never be who you are if you want. If you don't get with the right mate, say amen. Come on. I'm preaching to somebody not. Come on. But say, hey, a house divided cannot. Can I stand? I said a house divided cannot. I stand. A house divided cannot. I stand. You know what? When we come together, Brother Garnet, Pastor Garnet, we get things done. And you know what? If you get in your mind that you're going to come together and you're going to come to church with a made-up mind, no matter what the devil done to me today, I'm going to get my blessing. You'll get a blessing. But if you come to church and you say, oh, they treated me bad today, I ain't going to go. I'm just going to go, but I'm going to pumped up. I'm real mad. I can't get a blessing. you got to wipe that off and say, God, I'm here, and you're here to bless me. I don't care what happened to me today. I will be blessed in the name of Jesus. That's called a made-up mind. And you know, when you get a made-up mind, you're going to treat people like you should be, like you want to be. The Bible said, do unto others. And you would have them to do unto others. The Bible said, it's a golden rule. Somebody said, do unto others. As you would have them do unto you. How many of you have ever seen somebody that used to be an humble kind of person? Real loving, real gentle. And all of a sudden, that devil will get in there and just flare up. We all got it. Yeah. We all live in the flesh. Yeah. The flesh war against the spirit every day. Yeah. Yeah, I said every day. Yeah, it does. And you know what? The devil don't want you to be blessed. Yeah. That's why he fights it you so hard and the church so hard. Yeah. Man. When you see the church, like a pastor said, when you see the church start going to good, yeah. you better you better make up your mind that the devil going to pop his ugly head up. Yeah. But it's left up to us what we do. I said it's left up to you. Look, somebody say you. You and you and you, what we do about it. And you know, when people come in this house, they're going to look at me and you. And I don't care if you got a sore toe, belly ache, or, or toothache, you can say praise the Lord. I don't care if you're brought in on a stretcher and you're laying flat on your back. You can say praise the Lord. If you're glued to your pew for 21 years, you can still use your mouth to say, Praise the Lord! Brother yeah. Garnett, we've seen a church, a funeral, where well, that Norman Wilson, that primitive quartet guy, it was a Baptist church, but they had the fire burning in the church. Yeah. If you want the fire burning in your church, which is this is your church, you should get on your, let me tell you something, every time you come to God's house, you should be fighting to death. Yeah! How do you find him, Homer? Well, you praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That'll get him moving. That'll get him attacking. You know what? Glory. When you go to the hospital and you're in the hospital for a week and you get out, you come back to church, you're going to be a happy little camper. Say amen. Yeah. I'm out of the hospital. Hallelujah. Say amen. Yeah. But now you know what you're out of? You're out of bondage. When you get saved, you're out of bondage. I once was lost, but now I once was lost, but now I'm here. How many people know that God, God never was lost? He knew right where he was. Yeah. Say your name on the count of three. One, two, three. He knows your name. He knows everything about me and you. He knows what your heart's thinking right now. You know, our pastor said such a good word at the first like a little chicken. I used to love little chickens and get their eggs in the, when I was a child. I'd get off the bus and I'd run to the chicken house. Get their eggs. Yeah, and I remember the old mama hen. Pastor Garnet. 
she was on her nest. And I said, I gotta see these chicken, these chicken. Doodler, I call them doodlers, I call them doodlers, but who cares? Doodler, doodlers, it's a baby chick. And I was excited about seeing these little baby chicks hatch. And Brother God said how they woke up. I noticed how they pipped. I call them pipped through. They had a little beak and they pipped through. See, God made a way of getting out of everything. He did. He made a way. Them chickens, them little dealers was like, I want out of here. And if you want out of your bondage you're in, you're going to praise God. Hey, let me tell you something. The more you peep through that shell that's had you bound. Are you with me? It's simple as a child I can understand. How many people know when we was, when we was sinner, we was in a we was in a big old web shell. The devil don't want you to peek through. Say amen. Well, the wolves will come and get at the eggs and the, uh, the what, forget what other things, weasels, weasels, whatever it was coming to. Foxes love them. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm making up to go. Chicken hawks. That. Chicken hawks. Yeah. But how many people know that that little chick wanted out of there? Yeah. How many people know when you was lost, you wanted out of what you were feeling? Yeah. Say amen. Man. And you know, when you peep through, when, then when you come through the door, that's peeping through the egg. And when you sit on your poo, you're peeping. And like I told you, it's, it's easy. It's easy to say, hallelujah, can you do it one time? Hallelujah! See, we're like, we're in training. We are in training. You're a soldier, I'm a soldier. Yeah. We've got the general up here. And you need to take marching orders. Yeah. Come How many on. people know people don't like to take orders? Oh, they don't. Say amen. Yeah, they don't. Now, I believe it this way. Your ladies get mad at me if you don't do the man. Man. Thank you. Man. It is. If you're married, the man said, well, get mad at me, look at me, I don't care. <laughs> I forgive you anyway. But the man is the head of the household. And if you ain't got a man, you're the head. How many people know that you're in charge of your children? Yep. Say amen. Man. And how many people know that the devil don't want your children to come to church? Right. He don't want your children to mind you. Amen. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way it should be. And when it's old, it won't depart. And you know what? We're in a day and an hour when leadership is not being reverenced. And it comes from... Looks like... Go ahead, look at it. Bless the Lord. Well, go ahead, look at it. You pucker up for everything else. How many people know a kiss is good? I'm teaching you something. Come on. So you kiss with these lips. Well, I'm teaching you something. Go ahead. Come on. But these same lips, how you kiss that woman or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend, is the same lips that dog them out. Talk about them. Uh, Shut up, you old hag. <laughs> I'm preaching to somebody. Come on. Could be you. Not you, Paul. Then. <laughs> And people say they're Christians. Yeah. yeah, come on. Talk to me. Come on, that's Talk to me. And then you see a person out at workplace, and, and the Bible said you've got to respect leadership. Are you with me? Yeah. Your boss tell you to do something. You don't like doing it. Yeah. But you do it anyway. Yeah. If you don't, you get <laughs> moody or fired. Yeah. If you want a promotion in God, let me tell you, we'll start working. Start kissing up to God. Yeah. Kissing up your boss will get you nowhere. But doing the things that he wants you to do will get you promoted. That's right. I'm going somewhere with this. And doing the God's work when you come into his house. Kissing up to him. Go pucker up again. Go. Mm. Some of y'all ain't pucker. Go ahead. Mm. Been so long. Well, I'll tell you the truth. You get more with sugar than you do with salt. Amen. If you put salt in a wound, a wound, burn. it's going to burn. Yeah. How, how many people know the Bible said that when the salt lo loses its savor, uh -huh. it's no good for what? Yeah. For Say it again. Yeah. No good. But how many 
many people know a little hypnotist? With these lips. Uh, so I said, these lips. These lips. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Come on. In a simple way that children would understand it. Yeah. How many people know that you peck your mommy? Mm, see your mommy, love you. Mm, love you, daddy. Uh, you with me? Yeah. How many times have you told Jesus you loved him today? Come on now. Have you puckered up and told him you love him today? Yeah. Come on. I'm talking to you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, come on. But you know what? We're in a day and an hour when if we start reverencing God's house, in the way we should, yeah. and coming on business for the king, yeah. and coming in his house, yeah. it'll make your marriage go better, yeah. it'll make your job go better, yeah. it'll make everything in your life go better if you just get out of that stuff that's oh. holding you back. Yeah. Continuously, the devil tries to put things on you yeah. to keep you trying to pick out and break through. Yeah. You heard Rob Parsons go, break through, break through. Break through. Well, honey, when you break through, you need to break out and say, yeah, Lord, that's me. I've been delivered, hallelujah. I'm not bound no more. I'm not got glue on my shoes, glue on my seat, glue on my hands. I'm free. Yeah, come on. But you know what? The devil will make you feel like you're bound down. How many people know when you go through trouble, it's, it's hard to praise God? Man. Say amen. Man. On the mountaintop, it's easy. Yeah. When everything's going hunky dory, I'll shut up here in a minute. I know a card's already preached, but I'll shut up in a minute. I want you to look at somebody and say, with these lips. Say, my lips. My tongue. If I keep it bridled. Serious. It's going to help me. The Bible said, be slow to speak. Swift to hear. How many people know that's hard to do? If somebody comes at you, you're going to flirt up. Like that chick that's on the nest. You get around that, that chicken's nest where it's trying to hatch its. There's an old kiki bird every year. Every year in her yard. Anybody ever seen a kiki bird? A kiki bird, if you get around it when you try to mow, it'll try to divert you from going around its baby's eggs. It's, a, it's not a chicken. It'll go around a circle with wings out and try to divert you from that nest. Yeah. You know, something I noticed when Pastor got on, on Brother Carl's back. Where was everybody else trying to help? Brother Carl, let me help you to get the load. We all sit back, didn't we? It's easy to watch. It's easy to be a spectator. But it's another thing to help somebody out. How many people come to you when you're on the floor and the pastor getting on your back? Not even your daddy. <laughs> Nor your mommy. Nor me. <laughs> there goes your mouth again. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you get a made up mind when you come to God's house, and if this is the fruit of our this is the fruit of us right here. Yeah. How many people know every time you speak, you're planning something? Yeah. When you speak, and I'll shut up, I'm going to get ready to close. Blessing, Lord. You can either bless God or cuss God. Amen. So I say, how do you cuss God? Huh? Not in a big vulgar word. It, how many people know when Jesus on the cross and they did all them things, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. How many people know sinner people don't know what they're doing? No, they don't. Say amen. Man. They don't understand the hill of beans about God. And it's left up to us. Say, me and you. Me and you. They're looking at us. You're either going to be on fire or you're going to be a dead head. Amen. How many people like to be around somebody today? My preacher said about it. Pastor said about it the other night. Do you like going to a graveyard? Anybody talk back to you? Huh? He said it. Does anybody talk back to you? No. Now, you know what? When somebody comes into agreement with somebody, how many people know it's good to say, yeah, I believe we can do it that way? That's right. How many people know say, well, it needs to be done this way. Homer said we need to be done this way. You'll say it needs to be done this way. But when we come into agreement, how many people know when we agree, a threefold cord is not
not easily broken. Not easily broken. And I don't understand why the church can't come together. Come on. And buddy, we've been coming together in the rival services, but the devil tried to pop his head up. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Now you could come in discouraged and busted and all broken down, or you could come in with a, a, a praise in your heart, a praise in your lips, and a wave of your hand. I don't care if they carry in. You can say amen. Say amen. You got a voice. Use it. Amen. Even though we used our voice a minute ago when I got to her. Amen. The quietest person probably in the church is Thelma. Come here, man. Come here, Thelma. Her. Come on, run. Can you say praise the Lord, baby? Praise the Lord. I mean, really like to say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come here, ladies. Run. Move, soldier. If I'm going to teach these girls one thing, they're going to be praisers. They're going to really use their arms and legs. And can you say praise the Lord, baby? Praise Now, come on. Do you love candy? Maybe. <laughs> Let me hear you say praise the Lord real loud. Your turn's next. Hang on a minute. Yes, you are. I'll come back at you. <laughs> it's a snow day tomorrow and there's no school. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord! See, see that excitement? That's excitement. I remember when I get up, my dad said this way back down. So I was going, hallelujah! Yep, we did the same. <laughs> and I remember the mornings he'd come and you stay right there, girls. I remember the one as he come and said, no, nope, there's school today, son. You just try to flip back over and say, uh, uh. <laughs> Things that make you feel good and things that make you get excited. And if the Word of God can excite you, something's wrong. Something's wrong, yeah. And, and you know, I, I say it, I say it, and I say it again. I'm a sister pastor's church. We do not, you know, some people cannot come over. I understand that. But I got news for you. When people come into our church, our church, and, and you can't come and pray at an altar call. Something's wrong with us. We, I'd love to come. I have to stick on the stupid drums all the time. But I'd love to come and pray around the altar because people are looking at me and you. Yeah. We're either an example or we're not. Come here. Can I hear you say praise the Lord? <laughs> all right. Can you girls say praise the Lord together, trio? On the count of three. One, two, three. Say praise the Lord. Hey, Lord. Pretty good. Stand right there to yourself. You say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Getting better. Yeah. You say praise the Lord. No. I said to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now look here. And they all three come together and they said together, yeah, listen to what's better. So let's go ahead. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. <laughs> On the count of three, baby, you say praise the Lord real loud. Real loud. You're going to get a big ice cream cone from mommy and daddy. What are you going to say? Boy, girls. <laughs> I'm surprised they never didn't respond to that. <laughs> but it's simple. It's simple as a child can understand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I didn't say you believe so. Bless the Lord. Del Blue, do you love coming to church, baby? Yes. Lexi, do you love coming to church? Yeah. Do you love coming to church to listen? <laughs> <laughs> this is a tremendous prayer. The cat or the son, cat's got her tongue. <laughs> Pastor Garnett, now, now you get them with him, Pastor Garnett, say praise the Lord together on the count of three. Your girl's going to say praise the Lord on the count of three, and Pastor's going to help you. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. A little out. One, two, three. So what we're doing tonight, we're training up a child. Training up a child. Now, pucker up to him, bro. I'm going to say I love the pastor. <laughs> now, I'm going to teach y'all something. Yeah. How many people know we got a good pastor? Yeah. I said we got a good pastor. Yeah. Now, on the count of three, I want you to pucker up and say I love the pastor. One, two, three. I love the pastor. How many people know you do? Love overcomes. How much sin? Multitude. Multitude. Multitude of sin. Yeah, come on up here, man. Praise God. Oh. I really believe you love 
way people know the sergeant never gets <laughs> Now I've got one more thing for a close. I want y'all to stand your feet. And we're going to do this. Do it in parables. It starts from, it starts from up here. Y'all just be quiet a minute, okay? okay. I want you to say, praise the Lord, Sister Brenda. How do you pray? Whoa. Now, okay, good, good parable. Before we start, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. Come on. We're in the boat that God saved. And I'm not picking on you, Brenda. The Lord knows I love you. <laughs> We're in the boat that says, say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She said, Lana, she's got a big voice like her. Now, what should you do? The weakest voice for praising the Lord, or medium sized Lord, or, or Hallelujah! Yeah. What do you think you should do? Praise the Lord! Amen! That's right. What? Praise the Lord. You want to hear it? I do. Here it comes for Halloween. No, hold on, hold on. You're leaving home, so. Praise the Lord! Get up here. Praise 
door, Homer. I'll come back to you. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Uh oh. Do it like a so Praise the Lord! Here's one of my Baptist friends I love forever. She's a Pentecostal now. And she's a true friend of mine and a true friend of her family. She really is. You're saying it right. Maybe would you? <laughs> Say it right. Now, really, when we used to go to, to her church over at Mark Markham Baptist, <laughs> was that your daddy? Your daddy had a big bass voice, didn't he? Honey, he could sing bass like he could do better than any of these big Bill Gates or something. Joyce, now I want you to say praise the Lord like the Lord's been really good to you. Okay. Praise the Lord! I like it. I like it. Uh-oh. Here comes the letter. Somebody says, Homer, I've got a little voice. I can't not talk about you. <laughs> Now some of these children are really praising the Lord good. I'm teaching some here tonight. This is a teaching moment for all of us. And you know what? When you really love somebody and you really are dedicated to people and you're really happy in your life, a praise the Lord will come out even more. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. When you're happy, it's easy to say praise. Now, but not saying that people ain't happy. But do you really love the Lord? Carol, can I hear us say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord!
when we make it to heaven and every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. And even the angels will be saying, holy, holy, holy is the name of God. And they in a tongue there that will be saying, Lord, I love you. Won't be a tongue there that's, that's closed up and shut up because you've been hurt or you've been discouraged by somebody or somebody at work has hurt you or somebody your boss has said something to you make you mad or somebody in your family that's discouraged you or hurt you. I've got news for you. When you come in his presence, ain't nothing the devil can do to you when you just say on the count of three. One, two, three. And you know what? If I can teach you anything in life, two things tonight. Always be willing to come into God's house no matter what the enemy fights you with. Because outside these doors when we walk out, we face a cruel world. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And I know I talk and I give you parables, but that's the way the Lord told me to teach on tonight and preach on. And, but you know what? With these lips, the fruits of our lips, it's what we're gonna what we're gonna get out of our life. Amen. And what you're gonna say to the Lord, and you truly love the Lord. How many people know it look good? It, it felt good to look at somebody and tell, look at somebody tell me you love them, right in the eyes. Love you, brother. How many people know that I've got a habit of doing that before church service and the Baptists do it better? How many people know you can learn from each other? Amen. Or did I learn about going over for it was a Baptist church because the Baptists do it better than anybody. And when I worked with Walmart, what they did good. They did. And you know what? I'm not a copycat, but I, if it's something good in church and it's good, when you come to church again and you have a person sitting behind you, and when the pastor says something preaches good, you're going to say hallelujah, and you're going to say, praise the Lord! Because you've already lost. And when, the, when, the pastor, when the pastor says, oh, I preach it real good, you're going to say, Oh, uh -huh. 
we got off of it. We finally made the exit 104 to get off and go to 421. And when we got on 421, everything was stopped on that road. Yeah. So, and we got a little bit, and we probably got probably two.